Welcome back to the Always Aggressive Podcast. I'm Corey Palmer alongside Tanner Lipson. Head coach Tony Ersland uh, bringing you everything that's happening. And, and man, we've been we've been uh, taking our summer uh, siesta, I guess, and and uh, just putting a few weeks between shows. So we got a lot to talk about today, boys. Uh, we're going to get to non-conference schedule. We're going to get to the uh, the end of the recruiting dead period and, and uh, Christmas morning for uh, – all you sick head coaches out there and assistant coaches and director of operations and people who've been lighting the world on fire for the past uh, past several days. We'll get to all that. We've got some fun stuff on tap, including the newest Boilermakers arriving on campus. Uh, but, but first, let's go to the most recent competition, uh, U23 Nationals. Uh, I know we had several guys out there a few weeks back. Uh, Coach, run us through it. Yeah, no, it was great. I had another opportunity to compete, to get better and, and see where you're at. Uh, it was a long drive. You know, uh, we, we choose to you know, drive out to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. So that, that was a nine hour, you know, hoof it across four states, but, uh, but had a lot of fun. Uh, enjoyed my time with the guys. Again, you learn so much about these guys, right? Like I've got stories that I would love to just talk about my drive, but I'm sure more people are interested in the wrestling. And so we'll, we'll just keep it to that today, but uh, no, it, it was good. I thought overall we wrestled pretty well. If you look at results, you had uh, Thomas Panola again was was top four. Um, you know, lost to uh, Bonacorsi, the champion. You know, again, and then and then got caught in a lace. Honestly, you know, um, was in for third and fourth and got caught uh, take down to a lace and ended the match quickly. So a little bit of a sour taste in his mouth and how it ended. But certainly he should be happy. He had a lot of good, solid, strong wins and competed well. And his placing reflected that. Uh, Max Lyon, again, uh, had another strong showing. A little bit different, though. Uh, Max made it to day two. Um, won his match to place, but got his head dinged up a little bit in the process. You know what I mean? And and you, we just didn't want to push it any further. So we defaulted him out, even though he had placed, you know, to, to the top eight status. So, so those guys, you know, just from a placing standpoint, looked sharp and I thought did a nice job. Um, you know, uh, Garrett Nyenhouse was out there and had some some good wins. Um, you know, I think, you know, my, my reflection on him is he's got to work on some of his freestyle tactics a little bit. You know, as a scrambler and a guy who likes to flurry and, and ride, too. Um, tactically, he, he's got some things that he can work on, but showed a lot of good skills. You know, he loves to compete. That's the one thing about Garrett. Loves to compete, doesn't like to lose. And so this was another good kind of uh, eye opener where, hey, there's some tactics in my skill set that I really need to work on and improve at, you know, especially in the freestyle scene. But but great to see him, you know, put his shoes back on and compete. Uh, I thought Cooper Nori um, did a nice job. Uh, he had competed at U20s as well. And I thought his, his you know, form was much better here. And, and reflected, we weren't in school. We were able to train more and have guys ready, right, really have a dedicated training period. So I thought he looked much sharper. His shape and his tactics were, were good. So, um, you know, overall, I thought he, he looked good. Ethan Smiley, who hadn't got to compete much at all with, with COVID and those things, uh, loved watching him. He got out there and got some guys tired. Those that know Ethan, he's a grinder. And so to watch him get out there and really get after people and wear people down and get his hand raised a few times was a lot of fun. So those are just some notables. We had other guys there, obviously, but those are some guys that, that I thought, you know, really looked good um, and showed some positive things. Love to, uh, love to start with Smiley there, Tony. I was, I was, you know, I, I didn't make the trip. I was sitting here watching on, on my tablet and my phone and whatever else I could get my hands on to, to watch some matches. Uh, Sue Flo and I were like kicking the, we were kicking the account back and forth to like, okay, you watch or am I watching? Like who's, who's got it right now? But uh, Smiley down 8-0 in his first match and came back to win 19 to eight. He scored 19 straight points on a guy. Yeah. Um, how much fun was it to, to watch smiles go on that kind of run? No, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's easy, right? As I just talked about with Panola, you know, you're, you're a takedown and a, and a lace away from the match being over just like that in freestyle. You know, you make a, a mistake and the match is over. And, you know, he let it get away early. He gave up a takedown and a couple turns. But sure enough, he came back, um, was right back in the guy's face, hand fought him hard, created some attrition, right? Got fatigue involved in the match. And you could just see him kind of really keep rolling with the momentum. You know, it's, it, was, it was fun to watch. 
because anybody who knows him, he trains very hard. You know, he's always in shape. He's always prepared. And so it was nice to see him kind of work his way back in that match and eventually be dominant, not just work back and, and, and win. Like he broke it wide open. And, and that's, you know, something you like to see everybody do, you know, just you're never out of it. Stay in there and fight to the end and make things go your way. How much credit would you give to his new haircut? <laughs> I could ask that question because I know that smiles yeah. has worked. He's worked hard on that do and, yep. uh, and, he, and he looks sharp. And, yep. um, and, and it looked mullet. good out there on the mat. The, the mullet, and it's a bushy mullet, people. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a speed mullet. You know, sometimes, you know, Garrett will go with the speed. I call it the speed mullet. Yep. You know? And you guys are going to have to run out and look this up, maybe to understand mm -hmm. what we're talking about. But uh, but Smiley brings in a little fuller mullet, you know what I mean? A little bushier mullet. So completely different. But he's, I tell you what, he's committed. He's, he's committed. I'd actually like to see a contest between these two mullets all summer long. I, I hope they don't they haven't gone and cut their hair. Um, we did kick the guys loose after this tournament because we had trained for it, you know, for, for, you know, a good three weeks. And so we kicked them loose to go have some fun and see their families and they are back in this weekend. So it'll be interesting to see how much progress the mullets have made. Very curious. Very curious. Um, circling back to a guy who does not have a mullet, um, Tom Spinola with another, uh, top showing at a freestyle tournament you know you look at you look at his last few national type level events um two two place winning place winning performances at a uh, u23s two years in a row um round of 12 at ncaa's um you know when uh when are people going to start putting some respect on, on on tom's name amen well I, th I think it's coming you know increasingly right like his last uh, you know, three major results, I guess, if you look at national tournaments have all been very strong. He was top four in Omaha last fall was a round of 12 guy at nationals, um, you know, at 97. And then again, top four here. So, so I think, you know, I, I, I think you're going to see some respect put on that, you know, for years to come now. And it is worth noting too, he was down at 92 kilo and uh, he had tech followed the winner who made the world team at 97 kilo. So, so maybe we should have had Tom up at 97 kilos. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe that would have been been his weight. But again, he he's he's always a factor in the brackets he's in. And so nice to see him just consistency wise. He's always very consistent in his performances and what you're gonna get. I know that um one of the things that you've kind of been working on, not just with Tom, but with a lot of the guys, is uh, you know, diversifying their offense. You know, uh People who wrestle Tom, they know what he's about. And he's, you know, he's got his go-to stuff and whatnot. Um, how did you see his offense open up a little bit and, and, and do some different stuff? In, uh, yeah, in I, thought, I thought he displayed, uh, you know, a few different skills that he's been working on, you know, from leg attacks as well as some short offense from front headlock. So anytime you can add another, you know, a couple of ways to score you, and when people try to take one thing away, you can go other places, right. To create action. And I thought that's a little bit what hurt him, you know, this year, you know, when you, you wrestle him, you kind of find out what he's good at and you can take some things away and it becomes more predictable. Smells so turn. he just needed to add some skills in terms of attacks to put points on the board. And he's been working hard at it God. and he showed some, some really good things at the tournament. So that was probably the most valuable thing. Clearly, he got good results, but he showed he can score in different ways, which is going to be uh, key, you know, for his future success. Um, you know, Max, <clears throat> Max had a great tournament, um, you know, despite having to default to eighth. Uh, that was yeah. a bit of a bummer. But, um, you know, he uh, he's another guy. He continues to, to show pretty good results in, in freestyle. And, uh, you know, you look at his year and, and obviously he wrestled arguably the toughest schedule in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, what I say 16 of his 17 matches or something like that were against were against ranked opponents. Yep. And uh and and still managed to come out with a, a plus 500 record and, and had a good run. So um how is Max continuing to to progress and uh and how is his freestyle kind of affecting his folk style and, and vice versa? Well, I think you know freestyle first of all, is it's, you know, you're competing and it's wrestling. So you're going to get better in different skill sets. It's a different form. I think emotionally too, it's just good to do something different, right? Like, you know, uh, you're trying to always progress 
And, and so if you're always doing the same thing, you know, it's easy to get stale. So, so a change of scenery, if you will, in terms of being able to freestyle and compete and work on some different things, I think is good emotionally for you. You know what I mean? Um, you're getting better and you're competing, which is always a positive, but there's just different skill sets you're working on and occupying your time with. So I think that time away from a, from the folk style is just good to refresh yourself. And now we'll come back and we'll flip it over, right? Like just June 14, we're in there and we're going to get back to uh, rides and turns and, and escapes from bottom with the, with the folk style stuff. So um, it's nice to have that break away and, and come back and work on some different skill sets. So, um, but I, I guess to the, to kind of maybe answer this a little more clearly, it's similar to Tom in, in that you want him to be less predictable. You know, he's been around and what happened in my opinion, and I think we've talked about this a little bit is he wrestled two guys at nationals that he had beaten at the big 10 tournament, but that familiarity with him actually hurt him a little bit, right? Like they had wrestled him a few times. He was well scouted. They knew what was coming. And so to add some wrinkles to your wrestling, be able to score in different ways and be more unpredictable um, and create action is a big deal. So similar to Tom, you know, these guys, they wrestle hard. They're very dedicated, disciplined guys. They give you everything they have. So now it's about, hey, you know, um, being able to wrestle from, from lots of different positions and create action. One, uh, one note, you know, that it, it's kind of fun to point out, um, you know, when you look at those two guys, Max and Tom, um, at 184 pounds, you know, you talk about Max having some, some familiarity with the guys he had to wrestle. Um, a third, almost a third of the field came from the Big Ten. Yep. 184. So, I mean, it was – I mean, well, I, I don't know. My math isn't what it should be, but I can't figure. I mean, he was very likely to wrestle people that he had already wrestled. Whereas with Tom, um, there were only seven guys at 197 in the field. So significantly, significantly less and less opportunity to run into guys that uh, that knew him. So it was kind of it's kind of a fun note to, to look at how those two guys, you know, and, and, and obviously there are various situations and various weights to show how, you know, with the big 10 being what it is like you're and then they you know they got rid of the rule i don't know how many years ago it was now telling you to where you can wrestle a conference opponent in the right first out second. of the gate yeah yeah a few years ago it didn't used to be that yeah. way so yep. that's, that's it's good in that it pushes you you know like to be better i mean like as i said like he beat both um you know minnesota and ohio state at big tens and those were the two guys unfortunately that we saw that were again, very close matches and they always were but you know, that's an experience that, that Max is going to learn from. He's going to understand that he, you know, he, he kind of, uh, you know, made some mistakes, you know, tactically that hurt him in the match and that'll, that'll make him be better. You know, you learn from those things. And so I, I have no doubt that he'll be better from that next year. Um, I do have one last question regarding uh, some of, some of these guys. Um, you know, we talked, you talked, you brought up Garrett and, uh, and Coop, Coop Nori. Um, with the COVID year and with the way the year unfolded and the addition of the extra matches, um, some of these freshmen have now wrestled in a lot of like high level and high competitive, you know, events in their first year of school. Um, not a lot of true freshmen get to go wrestle, you know, in big 10 duels and in, in conference tournaments and stuff like that. Um, how much more seasoned do you think maybe this year's group of first years will be uh when it all when it all you know boils down then then maybe some of the previous classes yeah i i think it should help them a lot personally now a lot of it is 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 mentally to how they handle that because you're exposed sooner to those tough situations and i think anytime you're pushed and you're forced to grow that's a positive as long as you handle it correctly mentally you know emotionally if you look at that as yeah, I've really uh, had great experience here. I was pushed. I've grown. I've developed. It will help you next year that you can draw upon that experience in those same situations. And so I think it should be important for those guys. I really do. Um, but again, it's not the end all be all, right? Like the, the attitude that you bring in, the perception of, of the year that you had, um, you know, is very important. And that's part of our job too, is to help them understand that you've been in some really tough situations that, is going to pay off for you. You may not even see it now, but when you get there again, you, you're going to understand how to handle them just from repetition and being there before. Corey, you got anything else on U23s you want to throw in here? Uh, building off that last point, I think it's awesome because you can already see that with some of the younger guys. You see 
we 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 hammer this dude's name to death. If he listens to our podcast, he's going to have an inflated ego, if that's at all possible. But uh, to, Tom Panola learns from minute to minute, you know, out there, and it, 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 it's it's so cool watching him grow and watching him. Okay, he's he's building his Rolodex, right? Like we yeah. saw last year when he was heavy, every match he understood. Okay, now he knows a little bit more. This year, wrestler ninety seven. Okay. Every match, he understands a little bit more, and and you're right. Just getting getting that opportunity. A guy like Nine House, you know, the the freshman who would not have had a chance to necessarily compete in the past this first year. You know, maybe some would, maybe some wouldn't, but they definitely yep. did. And being able to 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 build that encyclopedia is it is yep. going to be cool to watch uh, uh, play out in the next couple of years, no doubt. And those should be big positives for those guys. You know, I think I always end up landing, and this is going to go off a little target from your guys' initial question, but it it goes to you hope experience is a great teacher. It is, right? We know that. But as long as they they will use it and look at it and learn from it, they'll be awesome, you know, um, you know learning tools. Um, the only thing I would say, and this is just me talking to the team probably more, is they've just got to make sure now that that everything they're doing this summer – um, is built around that hard work and the experience that they've accumulated, right? Like, um, you've learned and been in the fire and that, that you're going to, you were forced to grow from that now, Hey, take advantage of the summer and do all the little things that are going to put you in the best position to make, take advantage of that experience. You know, don't let it all be for not like, oh, I'm just going to be good. Cause I, I had a, you know, I was, you know, in there last year that doesn't work that way. You need to go, you know, go to work here and make sure that everything you do is uh, complementing the hard work that you've put in and the situations that you've experienced. And that's really what we're going to try to do next week. And I know we're going to talk about guys coming in, but, but that's really the point and the focus as we, we get ready for next week is all these little things have to be done uh, towards, you know, um, paying off. Before we move forward, let's, uh, let's look back at another announcement that has come out um, recently. Uh, we announced our non-conference schedule for the 21-22 season here recently. Um, a lot of road trips, a home date, a very cool event that will be special uh, to you, Coach. Let's, um, let's, yeah. let's, go, through, let's go through some, some dates here and, uh, and look at the schedule a little bit. You bet. Uh, important, right, people? It's non-conference only. The Big Ten <clears throat> schedule will come out early this fall, right? Typically the big 10 works through with basketball and then they kick us our schedule. So mm -hmm. that is coming not to worry anybody out there. Um, we, we kick it off November 6th. We're going out and we have Ryder and Drexel same day, uh, only 45 minutes apart, but kind of a fun challenge where, you know, we're all going to weigh in at the same time. And then we're going to have Drexel an hour, uh, sorry, Ryder first an hour later at noon and then uh, later that day, we'll trek across town um, back to uh, Philly and mm -hmm. we'll have Drexel probably six or seven at night. So an interesting challenge, two duels one day for us. Um, but, but I like it. You know, we're going to test ourselves in a little different way right out of the gate. Uh, the following week, we're away. Well, before, we, before you move on there, Tony, yeah. um, for the historians out there, not the first time Purdue Wrestling has made this trip. Um, we did the exact same thing. I want to say 2007? Maybe really? 2008, somewhere around there. We flew out and wrestled at Ryder, and then we went and wrestled uh, Drexel. We didn't actually wrestle Drexel in their gym, though. We wrestled them at a local high school. Huh, interesting. So, so you've been sitting on that nugget the whole time, and you didn't even tell me when we did this, because I, I was not aware of that. But that, that's I'm, sure I to, I'm sure I told you, and it's been it, it, it rattled <laughs> around and, like, kicked out with yeah. you know, all, all the other things I say around The gray hair took over. Did, no, did, yeah, we do sure. it, did we do it the same day? Back yeah, then? same. It was exactly, okay. Yeah, exact okay. same thing. Yep. Yeah, I remember two minutes duels. apart, so it, it'll yeah. be fun. We'll we'll do a noon to two, probably right. Get some to eat, relax, uh, trek over forty five minutes, get there in plenty of time, and and get ready to do it again. So, should be a fun trip. I remember two duels in one day, uh, a road trip I was on, a little bit more recently, still the previous uh, previous administration, but uh, when. when we wrestled in Cincinnati, then hopped on I-75 up to Cleveland. I-75 is probably not I-75. We hopped on the interstate and drove up to Cleveland for duel number two. That was a bit crazier. Yep. That was a wild day, Corey. That that, wild day. I, I, I forgot that you were on that trip. <laughs> yeah. that, was, uh, that was rough. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, no, it'll be fun. 
you know, mm -hmm. when we're trying to change it up a little bit, you know, uh, the Michigan State Open had kind of been a staple. Uh, I'm sure we'll still have a, a, a lot of guys there. Don't get me wrong. We'll be sending a lot of people who aren't on the trip with us to the Michigan State Open. But, um, but yeah, that'll be on November 6th. The following weekend, it's Cleveland State. Um, right now, it's just one duel. You know, we may catch another team. We'll have to wait and see. But it's uh, we're going to go over and catch Cleveland State on a Saturday. And then we come back, and it's going to be our quad at home. So it'll be nice. And we've got um, – uh, four different conferences represented here. So there's yeah. cons involved. The Mac is involved, the ACC, and then obviously us with the big 10 um, in a quad. So we'll have three duels on that day, November 20th. And that's, uh, let's see, it's Duke, it's Northern Illinois and it's Bellarmine, which is a new program just coming in. Right. And so they're getting out with D one competition. Um, then it's nice. We're going to take a little bit of a break. I got another note, Tony. We got it. I got to interject again. I got another uh -oh. note. A fun thing about the Boilermaker duels this year, um, mm -hmm. with Duke coming in, it'll be fun to see a pair of former, uh, Boilermaker assistants in Duke head coach, Glenn Lanham and assistant coach, Tom Erickson. Yeah. I spent, uh, I spent my first seven years with Tom. He was my roommate on the road. He really? Is, uh, oh yeah. I, yep, me and the big Tom. Man, on the road all the time. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we had a handful of years in there with, with Glenn before, uh, before he moved on. And, um, yep. it was, uh, it was, it was, you know, it'll be, I, you know, we saw those guys at nationals last year and that was where we started kicking around getting them in here for that. But, um, it's always, mm -hmm. uh, it's always fun to see those guys, you know, they, yep. they still, they still pull for us, you know, even, you know, being as long as they're not facing us. Right. Right. <laughs> right. No. And two good guys, right. Like two, two outstanding individuals, good guys, and we're glad we can get them up, you know, into, in, into our quad. And I believe they're, they're going to wrestle uh, Indiana as well on the same trip. It sounds like, so they're going to, yeah, up, they're working on that. They're going to hit up uh, a lot of schools while they're here. For sure. And then okay, I, you can move on now. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, <laughs> we will be off for Thanksgiving. We're going to be training. We'll be here. Um, but we're going to get ready because we have Cliff Keen, which is always a great challenge. We've talked about that before. And so we're excited to go back out to Vegas for the Cliff Keen invite. Uh, as I said, another big challenge, see a lot of different schools. I call it a ranking tournament, right? You'll see so many good kids, great opportunity for your young kids or maybe some of your lesser experience to move up and, and achieve a, a nice ranking. Um, and then we come back, we get ready for dead week and finals week and, and put the first semester to bed. Okay. But then we'll we'll train. We're gonna keep going, and we have something as you kind of alluded to. It's kind of gonna be fun and special for me, is we're gonna wrestle Iowa State in in my home gym. Um, for those that may not know, Kevin Dresser and I are from the same hometown, Humboldt, Iowa, and so it's gonna be fun to go back to Humboldt and and have a duel on a neutral site uh, against a quality opponent, and that'll be you know December nineteenth, right before we go into Christmas break. So. Uh, a lot going on, a lot of fun things, you know, for our non-conference in, in those first couple of months. For sure. And uh, not to be lost, we are going to finish up at the end of December, uh, same place we always do. We'll head up the road to uh, Hoffman Estates, Illinois, for the, uh, for the Midlands Championships. Um, another, you know, like you said about Cliff Keen, um, always a great tournament, huge, lots of tough, lots of tough people this year. Um, one fun note about Midlands this year um, that Tony and I realized looking at the schedule the other day, I got some, uh, I got some information from Northwestern. Um, they're going to be holding a women's division this year, Yeah, oh, awesome. which will be, uh, which will be pretty cool. You know what I mean? Just, just something different, grow the sport. Right. And uh, I, I mean, I have to imagine, I've never heard of, they've never done that before. Right, Tony? No, no. First time. So uh, a lot of exciting things going on and, and obviously Midlands as, as Cliff Keen, um, Last time we were there, we did very well, right? I mean, we sure did. A, a Cliff Keen champion as well as a Midlands champion. Devin was in the finals. Christian Bruner was in the finals at Cliff Keen, and then Christian Bruner obviously went on to even win at Midlands as well. So, you know, a, a lot of fond memories. And like I said, those are great opportunities to see other people that you're not going to see as you get ready to start Big Ten uh, conference competition January and February. Yep. Um, so, like Coach said. We're still waiting on the Big Ten schedule. It'll be a while, um, but uh, we'll get the rest of the schedule out there. Um, for those that, that want to go look at dates and, and find out when they can see the Boilermakers, uh, the schedule is posted live at PurdueSports.com, and they can go uh, 
they can go check that out on the wrestling page. Um, a little more current events. Let's get let's get a little more current. Uh, the last today is June 9th. The last nine days have been uh, kind of wild, huh, Coach? <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a whirlwind um, of activity with recruiting. The uh, the NCAA dead period officially ended on June first. Uh, which means that for those of you who are not well versed in the you know in the in the, uh, the legislature, um, student prospective student athletes can return can come to campus. We can uh, we can have official and non official visits again for the first time in over over a year. Um, in addition to the coaches can recruit off campus again, so uh, coach and our assistants can can go to tournaments or they can go do in home visits with kids or they can you know you know, go visit with their families and, and, and kind of get out and about. Um, you, you've done a little bit already. You've got more coming. Uh, how has the, uh, the return to travel suited you? No, it's been good just because it's a return to normalcy, right? I mean, you know, obviously on June 1, that day was a long day. We got out and saw a few people uh, with home visits and things like that. So, Yes, it makes for a busy schedule, but I, you know, I love doing it. Um, it again, it's just a return to normal, normalcy for us. And so I'm happy to be doing it, getting out and meeting these people, you know, uh, and it'll be a little bit of everything. As you mentioned, um, we have the home visits going on. We have official and unofficial visits uh, starting here as well. Uh, and we're going to have some camps going on. So it, it's, there's enough there to keep us busy from now until, until August one, for sure. Um. You know, in addition, I'm not going to give too many locations away, uh, but um, you're uh, you're looking at taking some some bigger trips for some home visits here in the near future. Uh, you know, jumping on a plane and, and getting out around the country. Um, you know, what is it? You know, we've we've noticed that Purdue um, Purdue has the ability with our education and you know being in the Big Ten and 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 whatnot uh, to attract from all over. And, um, and our, and our roster has shown some of that diversity over the last, you know, 10 to 15 years of, you know, kids from the West coast, kids from the East coast, kids from the South, you know, kids from all over the Midwest, uh, you know, you got Parker Phileas from Montana. Um, what is it, you know, how does that, uh, I mean, that because of the increased area, it's got to make your job a little bit harder, but it's also, I think got to be kind of exciting to be able to go all over the country to, to meet kids. No doubt. Um, and as I, said, as I said, that was one of my favorite parts of this is meeting the people face to face, talking to them, getting to know them. That, that's something that I genuinely enjoy. Um, we focused uh, primarily, especially the first week in June 1 of, of our local kids in state. Right. That, so what we're starting to do is we started in state and we're branching out now. And as you alluded to, I'll be on the road. You know, we're going to be coast to coast here uh, this summer. And um, honestly, it's, a, it's about looking for kids. I've said this a million times, so uh, you know, I'm going to repeat myself, but the kids who fit your program, you're always looking for the right fit. And we'll go wherever we have to go to find those kids, right? That's our commitment. We have lofty goals and, and you know, we're moving up. We've been top five, top six the last couple of years. But if you want to win it all, right, you got to climb over some of these other teams, you know, that are there. Uh, we, we're going to have to go where the best kids are and we'll do that. Uh, but again, always keep in mind, look at home and then and then branch out and find those kids that really fit what you're trying to do and embrace the culture that you have and that will feel good about their experience at Purdue. Absolutely. Um staying on kind of the recruiting vein uh we'll uh jump to the fact of the the newest group of boilermakers uh will very soon be on campus um we have several guys who uh, are enrolling in summer school and will move into their various um apartments and houses and where you know wherever they're going to live this year and um and be able to, to start training with the boilermakers yeah, very exciting. This is the one you wait for, right? You, you finally have a chance. We've had some of these kids committed for two years. You know, if you look when they committed and now, you know, they're, it's finally here. So it's exciting for that to come to fruition. Um, also, not uh, lost on me is the experience for some of these kids in the last year. And I guess the one story I'll tell is we had Stony Buell on campus uh, just here yesterday. And, you know, just brings to light like he never got to take an official and obviously the dead period lifts on June 1, 
and we just couldn't get the official done. And he's moving to campus this week. So he came down and man, listen, he, he just went through campus. He walked through stuff with us. He saw everything. We talked about stuff, you know, and it, and it was just, it's kind of surreal to think that, um, you know, a young man like Stone, he felt so good about Purdue and he does, you know, um, and, and you can see yesterday, things are starting to line up exactly the way, you know, you know, he, he wanted it to. So we feel really good about it, but think about what his recruiting experience was like compared to some of these other kids now. And, and you just have a great appreciation uh, for a young man like that, who uh, is willing to, to kind of join your program and be excited about what you're doing. And, and he didn't have that traditional recruitment. So, so just a lot of love for those guys, you know, that, um, that went through that COVID recruiting and still, you know, felt good enough to say, Hey, Purdue is where we want to be. And, and we're, we're, we want to be a part of it, I guess. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, it was a good time getting to see Stoney yesterday and walk him around and, and, you know, take him into the resting room for the first time, take him into the locker room for the first time, uh, you know, take him into the sports medicine, you mm -hmm. know, complex for the first time. And, uh, and, you know, in addition to the fact that, you know, we, we talk often with, uh, with recruits about the fact that, you know, all our facilities are, are very close together. You know, you don't even have to go outside to go from one building to the other, you know, got the tunnels and, and stuff like that. And so getting him to like experience that mm -hmm. and like, you know, just walk in this tight circle and get to see everything very quickly. Um, he, you could, you could tell he was excited. The energy was, it was fun to see, to, to have to go through that with him for the first time. Um, you know, knowing that, you know, he's, he's going to move in here in a couple of days. Yep. No, a lot, it was a lot of fun. I, I got a real kick out of that. And at the same time, you have a little piece of you that you're like, wow, you know, this, um, I felt really good that he ch chose to be a part of this, not having all of the opportunities. Yeah. And, 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 you know, to me, he wants to be here. Like he really wants to be here. And that's the best reason for it. We talk about it all the time. We're looking for those, those talented, hard-nosed kids that love to work, but man, they're excited about being here and excited about what's happening. And that's definitely him in these, in these group of kids. And he was decked out head to toe in Purdue gear. That was my favorite part. He was, yep. my man is, he is all in. It's so, it was, uh, it was fun to be around him. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting the rest of these guys in this weekend. Yep. No doubt. Um, Corey, I think you're, uh, I think, I think you're up, man. I think oh, yeah, you said we're, coming, we're coming, we're coming to the end of it. We've got everything on the checklist. Uh, yeah. So, um, couple couple things I've got for you guys what one is is interesting in the wrestling world kind of um the other part of my job is to head up the uh the the live streaming of of all Purdue athletics and uh that means I work with the Big Ten Network a lot um speaking of we're going to try and I, I need to talk with you guys offline about this <laughs> Iowa State duel out in Humboldt because we got to get that on the network however we that'd be can. awesome mm -hmm. and, uh, uh we'll talk about who owns the rights to it who you know we won't get into the, the nuts and bolts here, but we're going to do all we can to try and bring that to you uh, one way or the other. That's, that's too good of a meet in the wrestling yep. world. To, aside from the storylines, it's too important of a meet to, uh, to have the world not be able to see it. So we'll try and get that done. Um, but I had the opportunity to work with uh, Shane Sparks a couple weeks ago. He came down to, uh, to call some baseball games, believe it or not, trying to branch out, you know, his skill set and, and open up some other opportunities for him. And it was cool getting to hang out with Shane. That dude is a, a bundle of energy. I'd never met him in person before. Uh, I've never met anyone quite like him before. And, and I just had to, had to mention that he had nothing but, nothing but great things to say about, about you coach and about the program and everything like that. So it was fun to hang out with Shane and, and I uh, just wanted to give him a shout real quick. Yep. Uh, Unfortunately, it was the same time that, that you were out in Omaha competing. So uh, you right. guys weren't able to hook up, but, but I'm sure Shane will be back. And I, I, uh, th that, was, that was fun. Um, the other thing, this is wrestling adjacent, I guess. Um, <laughs> I'm really curious to see where this is going. Yeah, where is this going? I do not want to get in trouble by, by conflating the two. Uh, worlds because they are very different worlds and I don't want to step on any toes here but um, I grew up watching uh, the WWF the WWE as it is now and, yep and uh, my guy was the ultimate warrior who it turns out grew up in Crawfordsville Indiana just 
30 minutes down the road, went to Fountain Central High School, which was phenomenal. Wow. I didn't know that. Um, I learned that by watching this A&E documentary series that they're doing, biographies on, uh, on these pro wrestlers. It's coming to a point here, I, I swear. Um, <laughs> we're watching one the other night, my wife and I are both into this series. We're watching one the other night on uh, Breath to Hit Man Heart. And, and they do a, a segment on his little brother, Owen. It's uncanny. <laughs> no. Wow. <laughs> I guess I better start growing a speed mullet. I, I, yeah, I was just saying, you need the speed the speed mullet. Or that's a, wow. So hold on, hold on. I got another one here. All right, that's, that's, a, that's one. Here's another one. Man. <laughs> oh, Lordy. I'll be darned. That's a... This is my that's favorite. That's uncanny. No. <laughs> That's it right there. That was, I was going to say, that's the best one. Isn't that's great? incredible. It's the same that's the best one. <laughs> wow. Oh, Lord, see, that's I'm, like, uh, I'm like, Jacqueline, that looks like Coach Ursuline. And she goes, yeah, it does. <laughs> no. And I just, I had to. I just had to. Uh, I had to bring that up. I didn't know if that ever been brought up before. No, I, that's, that's a first. Um, oh, Lordy. <laughs> That's uh, wow, Corey! I did not see that coming. Yeah, yeah, and and you That's pulled all, all the right pictures. Like the last one lined up perfectly. <laughs> Man, I'm not gonna. I, I, I will flat out say I spent way too much time working on it yesterday. <laughs> uh, so is this a conspiracy theory that Owen Hart did not actually did not actually die in the ring that yeah. he retired and became a wrestling coach? <laughs> wrestling coach. In West Lafayette. I'm not sure we want to go that path, but uh, okay. Let's well, keep that quiet. <laughs> let's keep it quiet. Let's keep that quiet. It'd be, I'm telling you, listen. <laughs> right now, you know, normally you want a lot of people to listen to this and watch this because that's great. But I just hope the team ain't watching this because I don't you'll know, never. You'll never don't know that. what's going to show up in the wrestling room now. I, I I I I really wonder. But the only thing I got going for me is Bruner is in vet school. I believe in the Bahamas, right? So think hits. he can't come back and, and haunt me with this. There you go. Well, he might, he might remote in. Well, yeah. finding, the, finding the pink singlet, I think, would be the hardest challenge to yeah. really pull that off. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think you better watch out for uh, for the guy the guy or gal who runs your Twitter account, though. Cause yeah, no, he, you're probably right about that. I got to show up there real easy. Yeah, I don't know. How, I don't. I don't know how that could ever make his way on the social media, but it's, uh, <laughs> gen, it's a genuine possibility. You ain't kidding. Um, the only other thing I'll say um, is what you first part with Shane Sparks is. I big shout out to Shane too. I obviously yeah. he does a great job and and uh, known him for a long time. He's always detailed and prepared, and you know uh, works hard at at his craft. So uh, yeah, I definitely ag agree with your sentiments on Shane. He's He's, he's top notch and we're glad to have him in the big 10. Definitely. Pretty funny. Well, you had a call. I got a call from Shane this year. Uh, he got switched on to one of our duels at the last minute. Mm -hmm. And um, might've been Northwestern. Was it the first one? I don't think so. I think it was later. I, I think it may have actually been the Iowa. Duel. Oh, okay. Okay. But he, um, I think he said he got somebody's name wrong or something like that. And he was just beside himself that like he really did yep. us some sort of disservice. And it was just like, it's like, Shane, man, we love you, dude. Don't worry about it. We're, we're good. Like, it, you know, yep. professional, professional, uh, you know, things happen. That, that did, you did, you did the best with the hand you were dealt, my man. So it was, yep. um, but it's just, like you said, it speaks to his, his dedication to his craft. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's dev I mean, he's, he's already the voice of wrestling or, you know, becoming the voice of wrestling in, in the big 10 and, and nationally and, yeah, I hope he. I hope he's able to branch it out because great dude, immensely talented and uh, very yep. well prepared. It was it was fun to work with him. Did he yeah. like his baseball? I've not talked to Shane since he was here. Did he enjoy doing baseball? He did. He he enjoyed it. He was good at it. Uh, he said mm -hmm. he hadn't called a game in probably ten years. You couldn't wow. tell. He did a really nice job with it. Um, so yeah, I think I think he liked it. And you know, it's no secret there's a lot more baseball games out there than there are wrestling meets. So if, no doubt, if, if his uh, if his people can get him involved in some of that, it's a good good career move for him, and and you know good visibility for him. It's good for the sport too, I think. So no doubt, for sure.
Well, uh, that's enough nonsense for today. Yep. Well, I got I to gotta come up with something for next time now. Oh, man, man, that was good. Well, I don't listen, not that one. you already had mullet pictures there, even though it was supposed to be of my likeness. I'm telling you, we, we I got to see how uh, how Smiley and Garrett come back because we might have to have like a beginning of competition at the start of summer mullet pick, and then we, we bring it back at the very end. Let's um, do it. I'm intrigued, you know, about this. That's for an after action. I like yep. it. Yeah, we got to make that happen. We'll, we'll, we'll get the mullet competition. Yeah, it might be more than just the two of them. Yeah. Uh, you never know. Whoever wants in. I know D. Schroed had some shaggy hair last year at one point, decided to decided to cut it cut it short, but he, he's capable. Yeah, Amel's son one was growing up. A, a, a big do. Yep. Uh, he's branching out. Mm. I like it. We can hook that up. We'll we'll you know we'll tease that for next time. The Absolutely. mullet competition 2021 down the road. Uh, that's gonna do it for this week for for Coach, for Tanner, and Corey. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, boiler out. <laughs>